Our first speakers are Julie Song, President for Advanced RF Technologies, and Arthur Kim, Arnold Kim, Chief Operating Officer for uh, Advanced RF Technologies. They're going to be discussing the use of DAS and small cells in the medical environment. So we'll start with you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much to Donald Johnson and the FCC for inviting ADRF to this very special occasion to share with you and our industry. We are ADRF, uh, a pure played original equipment manufacturer of distributed antenna system or DAS. And we are a, um, a founding member uh, of an industry we proudly and passionately call in building. Memorial Sloan Kettering Counseling Center, or MSK, really needs no introduction. It's world-renowned as the highest quality, most advanced, most comprehensive healthcare organization fighting cancer. The world's oldest and largest private cancer center, Memorial Sloan Kettering Counseling Center, has devoted more than 130 years to exceptional patient care, innovative research, outstanding educational programs, and according to U.S. News and World Report, Memorial Sloan Kettering has ranked as one of the top two hospitals for cancer care in the country for more than 25 years. In addition, the 2015 Best Doctors issue of New York Magazine recognizes more cancer physicians from MSK than any other hospital in the New York metropolitan area. Their newest outpatient location in West Harrison provides care closer to home for their patients and their caregivers living in Westchester who might otherwise have to travel to Manhattan for treatment. And as you can imagine, for folks dealing with chemotherapy and such, uh, a little in inconvenience can mean a lot. So patients are treated with MSK's multidisciplinary disease management teams, which combines the expertise of many doctors to ensure that patients who need several different therapies receive comprehensive cancer care. MSK's desire was to bring robust, mission-critical wireless coverage to enable their staff's productivity and patient guest communication, which befits MSK's reputation as a premier cancer research and treatment organization in the world. How do you do that? The answer is DAS. The reason why DAS is so compelling is because anytime you ask the question, how do I best achieve robust mission critical coverage in my venue, the answer is always DAS. And with the healthcare vertical, uh, it takes all the compelling reasons for DAS and amplifies it, magnifies them uh, even more so. And what do I mean by that? The wireless solution at MSK, West Harrison facility, had to provide both mission-critical communications for physicians and clinicians to ensure the highest quality of care, but it also had to provide robust coverage for its patients and guests for a treatment and guest experience. Regarding the former, each patient, when they actually go into uh, the facility, are handed a uh, a pager that they wear at all times to track them, and that utilizes the paging 900 megahertz frequency band. Regarding the latter, our DAS solution had to accommodate all the U.S. carriers, uh, given the inherent bring-your-own-device phenomenon that was alluded to earlier. So although Sprint didn't initially join the system because of sufficient macro coverage, they uh, eventually will to utilize their uh, extraordinary 194 megahertz holding in the BRS 2.5 gigahertz uh, frequency band. AT&T, on the other hand, want to future-proof the capacity at the venue by requesting WCS 2.3 gigahertz support even before they had any signal sources to go into the DAS. So in any of these cases, whether we're talking about paging or Sprint's 2.5 or AT&T's 2.3, the ultimate modularity of the DAS enabled MSK not only to support the desired frequency bands with no wasted investment at the current time, but also to maintain 
the future proof possibility of adding uh, frequency support at any point in the future. One of the most compelling aspects of the healthcare vertical, and certainly prevalent at MSK's West Harrison facility, is the dense building composition. We're talking about lead in the walls. We're talking about X-ray machines, CT scanners, patient beds that severely attenuates wireless signals. And moreover, specific to this facility, there was a, a topology that a topology as well as a IDF closet, telecom closet space constraint that drove the decision from an RF design perspective to use uh, outdoor high power nodes inside the building. And that was a perfect fit for the venue. Furthermore, our DAS head end accommodates virtually any type of signal source. And we're talking about anything from a base station at 40 watts, a remote radio head, a small cell, a repeater. And what that does is, for some of these wireless service providers, it allowed them to initially feed the DAS with a repeater, knowing that they would eventually move to a small cell. Some of the carriers decide to uh, inject a, a base station to begin with. But that ultimate flexibility in both the input type as well as the output power is a perfect example why DAS is the most ideal solution for healthcare facilities. Within our in-building industry that we're so proud of, we've recognized in the last few years the significant growth of what we call enterprise-owned DAS. That was also alluded to before. This is a deviation from the traditional model where carriers pay for DAS. And MSK is certainly a prime example of an enterprise customer really stepping up and investing in their own infrastructure. But it's inc incumbent upon us in the DAS industry to provide the easiest to use, the most intuitive, the most reliable technological solution so it's not intimidating to enterprise IT staff. And the, the staff that we worked with at MSK were top-notch, world-class IT staff, but it's not fair. It's not, their, it's not their responsibility to ask them to uh, inculcate how to commission and optimize a DAS into, into what they do, which leads to uh, my next point, which is, as I mentioned, ADRF is a founding member of the DAS in-building industry that we uh, operate in. But 20 years ago, DAS was not nearly as commonplace as it is now, and the reason for this uh, DAS and small cells day. Yet it's still a relatively specialized uh, niche within the overall telecom industry, and it requires a very uh, deep and wide network of, uh, of of folks doing their own part within this ecosystem. What I mean by that is the carriers have their part. OEMs like ourselves have our part, but we also rely heavily on systems integrators, consultants, and in MSK Harrison's case, they had in-house uh, union contractor. So it, re it re uh, required a well-orchestrated professional deployment uh, that leveraged all these different people working in a, in a concerted fashion. And uh, as you can see from the myriad steps that were involved, it started with a certain coverage scope and a certain design, and it morphed into lots of different things, and that's very typical for, for the DAS industry. But the need for professional coordination, especially as the enterprise-owned DAS phenomenon grows will become even more critical. So uh, we, we applaud the FCC for the tremendous progress in the 600 megahertz incentive auction, uh, easily achieving the 126 maximum target. Um, and we at ADRF, we stand ready to continue to support uh, this exciting future um, with the most advanced technological solutions uh, as represented by our DAS, especially for uh, healthcare verticals and MSK as a prime example of that with the most important features such as modularity, flexibility, simplicity, and professional coordination. Thank you. All right. Arnold, I had a, a quick question. Um, is the use of DAS at Sloan Kettering is that unique, or are we starting to see DAS being used in other medical facilities, similar to Sloan Kettering? I think uh, we showcased the 
the DAS that we deployed at, at um, SK West Harrison because it's such a great example, but it's certainly not unique. It's, uh, like I said, the healthcare vertical is prime for DAS. It has a uh, BYOD component, so right. you would never know exactly which wireless service provider, the guest, the patient, the clinician, the physician is going to bring with him or her. Right. And uh, with the the severe attenuation that is present in the, the building, uh, it just sets up for a natural use case for, for DAS. All right. Uh, another question I have is how does the DAS system interact with, um, say, the emergency room and first responders? Say, for example, there's calls coming in from, from uh, first responders. Can the two interact? It's a great question, and absolutely you can. And uh, the beauty of DAS is if you have a, a proper architectural design for the DAS, and I don't want to get too far into the technical weeds, right. but uh, with the modularity and the flexibility that DAS can provide, obviously we can cover all of the four major U.S. wireless carriers. And the U.S. has an extremely uh, rich spectrum chart that all the carriers utilize in a different fashion. And so to be able to accommodate each of those spectrum slices, whether it's 700, 850, SMR 900, the list goes on and on, that's absolutely critical for DAS. But we also support public safety 700, public safety 800, UHF uh, 450, VHF 174. And to be able to accommodate those frequency bands on the same technological solution for an enterprise customer is critical because those are the frequency bands that the public safety uh, community uses that's different from what commercial carrier uh, operators uh, ha have utilized. And uh, for an enterprise customer, they don't care. Right. They want to have robust coverage for both of those needs. Sure. And if it's on one uh, common system, so much the better. All right. Okay. We have a question right here from the audience. <coughs> With... Uh, could you please describe the various medical and telemedicine um, applications of this deployment? Well, um, the beauty of the DAS is the applications, uh, or the DAS is agnostic to the applications, meaning we're supporting uh, as rich uh, a, a transport uh, a medium as possible for the, the providers that, that uh, the creators of that capacity on whatever frequency band is supported in that local market by the commercial carriers. And so as long as we're able to provide uh, bandwidth and connectivity, then the applications community, they're uh, you know, infinitely more creative and they can cr come up with whatever applications uh, to enable productivity for the, the physician, the clinicians, um, and just utilize that, that connectivity and bandwidth. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right.